when I looked at the walls in front of me, I had messages scrolling down the walls from this Chinese warlord telling me how he was going to kill me, how he was going to kill my family and friends. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to become part of the Transplant Helper community. Hey folks, welcome back to the Transplant Helper again today. My name is Jim Burrell and today we are discussing ICU delirium. Now, if you're not exactly familiar with what that is, it is a terrible, terrible experience that oftentimes people go through after having gone through a traumatic injury, a severe illness, or a major surgery, and it generally takes place as they're being brought out of sedation. It can include things like being in and out of consciousness, unaware, delusional, having visions, hallucinations hallucinations, uh, mood swings, uh, not knowing those things that are around you, even family members that are around you. And it overall can be extremely horrifying for the patient, but terrible to watch for the family itself. So because of that, we are discussing it today from a few different perspectives to hopefully give us a better understanding of it so that if it is something we might face in the future, we can have a better understanding of it and kind of face it at least, you know, with eyes wide open and being able to deal with it in its way. So let's jump in. Let's do the first of these things. Then we'll come back and talk about some solutions or at least some things that might aid or assist us in dealing with ICU delivery. Okay, now before we go any further, I'm going to be sharing with you an interview with a fellow by the name of Brian Pingeli. Um, Brian basically experienced severe ICU delirium, and so we're going to be posing some questions to him and just kind of see how he answered that so we kind of get a feel for what this experience must be like. First of all, Brian, what happened to cause you to need to be attended to in an ICU environment? I woke up one morning. Um, I wanted to go to work. My wife was a bit concerned about my health so she got an ambulance i the ambulance turned up i got into it and that was the last i remember um, apparently i had pneumonia and was very close to death i was in icu for seven days i believe it was um, on, no i was in a coma for seven days and then another week in icu recovering what do you first remember about your experience with delirium the first thing I remember is waking up and they were asking me questions. Um, did I know where I was? Well, as there was a nurse stood there, I guess I was in a hospital. Um, and then they said, your wife will be in in a minute. Now, this lady appeared who I didn't recognize, who they were telling me was my wife. Um, while I was unconscious, I had very vivid dreams of being married to somebody completely different and living on a tropical island out in the South Pacific. So that took a bit of getting over. I was actually thinking of I married two women. Uh, what do you remember about the hospital staff during that time? I was very scared of the nurses um, throughout. Um, I thought they were um, out to get me um, as part of the dreams I had when I was unconscious. Um, I believe that there was some kind of Chinese warlord who was going to assassinate me, my friends, my family, and the nurses, I believe, were in his employ. And so, so I was very, very nervous and kept my eye on the nurses at all times, um, studying what they were doing. Um, what other hallucinations were you experiencing during your time dealing with delirium? When I looked at the walls in front of me, I had messages scrolling down the walls from this Chinese warlord telling me how he was going to kill me, how he was going to kill my family and friends. When I looked up on the, on the ceiling, there were spiders on the ceiling, um, and they seemed to be mocking me at all times. Were there periods of delirium that were more disturbing than others? Um, the worst incident of all, um, I was taken into another room and they were doing some kind of procedure. What I was actually seeing was an American prison cell where they were going to put me to death. I could actually hear the voices of the family of the people I supposedly killed, uh, calling me all sorts of names. In the end, because I was in so much distress and asking the nurses not to kill me, um, they said, we'll get your wife in. Now, I'm thinking, how the hell is my wife here? I'm in America. How has she got here? And 
luckily enough, a nurse, I believe she was in an RAF uniform, turned up with my wife and they convinced me that I was actually in Derriford Hospital. How long did you experience this sort of delirium? This went on, the illusions, the, the blurring of reality with what I was experiencing in dreams went on for about four days. It, at times it was absolutely terrifying. Um, I, I, I couldn't trust anybody. I, I think at one point I asked one of the nurses, one of the nurses said to me, why are you in such distress? And I said, well, it's the spiders on the ceiling. And she turned around and said, can't you see it's only the air conditioning? So as you can see from that, ICU delirium is real and it can be extremely traumatic, not only for those who are involved in it personally, but even for the family members looking on from the outside. So what can we actually do about this? Is there anything that can be done to try to minimize the effects of ICU delirium on our loved ones? So thankfully, the answer to that is yes. There are a few things that we can do to help assist the situation, to try to minimize it. However, we must be upfront with this. We're not going to cure this necessarily because it's just not that well understood. But one of the main things you can do with that loved one is to try to work really, really hard to maintain a connection to reality with them. Again, they're going to be confused. They may not know what's going on. They may not even recognize who you are or anybody else in the room, but the harder that you can work to try to just describe to them reality, to make sure that they are aware of what's actually going on without arguing. And don't argue with them over what they perceive to be going on, but just you know, talk them through situations. Let them know, okay, here's what is being done. They're pulling a breathing tube. They're making a blood draw. They're adding some pain medications. They're checking some monitors. They're carrying you down for a procedure or even just a small talk that's around the room. You know, their lunch comes in. Try to describe to them exactly what is on their plate. Try to describe to them how tasty you think it'll be. Just anything that helps to connect them to reality. As far as you speaking to them, you need to do that. In addition to that, a Touch is very, very important in this. You know, you see a lot of people in the hospital when they're in a coma or when they're in a situation where they're not aware at all, where someone just casually puts their hand on them and just holds their hand and lets them know they're there. For whatever reason, that physical connection with the reality can go a long way as well to bringing them back to it, at least for periods of time until hopefully you can get over this major hump and bump in the road and get them back uh, like they would be more normally in life. In addition to those things, one of the very important things you can do that most hospitals will advise in this situation and maybe even offer you access to a physical copy you can use, but they may give you a notebook, a journal of sorts where you can journalize what is going on. And typically what you're advised to do in that situation, I think really does help is to just kind of journal, journalize what is reality versus what is perceived, okay? Uh, in that case, for example, say someone is getting their breathing tube out. You can write down the date, the time, and say, you know, Jack is getting out his breathing tube pulled out. There are a bunch of doctors around here. They're working with him very uh, compassionately, and they're being very cautious, but they're easing the breathing tube out. They're trying to make this as simple as possible. They're explaining it, and maybe John does very well in getting that pulled out. What he may perceive is I even saw one man who did when I was kind of researching this he perceived when his breathing tube was getting pulled out to him that's not what was happening that tube that he saw was actually a hollow clear tube filled with liquid and he thought he was drowning in that so you've got a situation of reality versus perception and by you journalizing those moments and kind of keeping track of that because after this is all over your patient I've been there done that may not actually remember some of these things or if they do, they remember that skewed, uh, delirious version of such. And so just take time and just journalize their day. Maybe at least once an hour, just write down something that's going on, something that they're experiencing. And if they're having any type of uh, ill thoughts about this or, you know, delirious thoughts, write out beside that what they think versus what was reality. And then later on, say they recover, they're at a hospital and you are ready to sit down and talk about some of this and to help them cope, you can sit down now with that journal and say, okay, here are the things that you
you thought were happening, but here's reality. And have that documented because there are times when these members are so confused and so out of touch with reality that they've been known to argue with their family members months later and say, no, no, you you don't understand like that man. You don't understand. I was actually drowning. I was in a tube and, and everybody was just standing on the outside of the tube laughing and no one was willing to help. Well, again, that's what he perceived versus reality. So journalizing those things. So to kind of recap, yes, delirium is real. Yes, it can be extremely difficult. The case we took view of and the questions that we ask, I hope can allow you to see that. But keep in mind during that, that if this occurs in someone's life, again, one in three, it might. If this occurs, that it's going to take some time. It's going to take a lot of patience on both parts in order for you to successfully move through this. And it's going to take you kind of employing whatever tactics you must in order to help them recover. I hope this has been helpful to you today. It's not exactly the subject I wanted to sit down and talk about, but more and more I'm seeing people deal with this and more and more I'm seeing people uh, be like I or anybody would be, would be going into this blindly where they just don't have any idea this is possible and it can knock entire families off their feet very quickly in seeing a loved one deal with this or experiencing this ourselves. So thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, please stay stronger, friends.